Today on Joker Watch, I built a nightstand for my daughter out of scraps and offcuts with a live edge top from a tree I cut down in my front yard. Welcome to the watch. I like to start off with pencil and paper. It gives me a place to put the ideas in my head and it's really a fluid starting point because the end project never looks exactly like the starting drawing. Here I have three quarter inch birch plywood left over from the top of my table saw workbench build. So I go ahead and cut that down into the three panels that I need for the side and back of the nightstand. And while I'm doing that, you can get a good look at the scar on the back of my elbow. That's a good thing chicks dig scars because I got a lot of them. So here I'm cutting a rabbit into the side panels of the nightstand. This would go much quicker with a data stack, but I don't have one. So I just go slow and take my time. After the rabbit is cut, I grab my chisel and I clean up any remnants left from the table saw blade. Then I grab that back panel and I check for a clean, snug fit. That looks good to me. Nice and snug. So this is where not having a plan drawn out really comes back to bite you in the hiney. I don't really know where I'm going to put my drawer slides and I'm contemplating how I've gotten this far in my life but I'm able to overcome my own shortcomings and I go ahead and get these slides installed. I like to do it on the box before that's put together. It just makes it overall easier. And once the slides are installed, I can go ahead and glue up and screw the box together. And I delicately make sure all the panels are lined up and seated correctly. And now that the carcass of the nightstand is assembled, I can go ahead and cut the trim pieces that will decorate the outside. And these pieces are offcuts of three quarter inch hardwood that I had installed in my house. I really didn't want to see them get thrown away, so I kept them all. And I was happy to find a project that I was able to use them on. Now I take several of these pieces and glue up a panel for the bottom shelf of the nightstand. And once out of glue up, I can trim down to its final size. With the remaining pieces, I drill pocket holes so I can use them to assemble the front face frame. Huh, say that five times fast. Once all the pocket holes are drilled, I go ahead and grab my clamp and I clamp everything into place and add screws. And if you look closely in the top right hand corner, you can see the head of the assistant shop manager checking on my work. Definitely takes a team to keep me on track. Once the face frame is assembled, I go ahead and drill two pocket holes to attach to the top. Here I'm applying tight bond three and then I'm smoothing it all out so I can attach the face frame. And these are just cheap clamps from Harbor Freight. Whenever I need a small glue up clamp down, I always find myself reaching for these. Now, would I like more expensive, better clamps? Absolutely. But for me being a hobbyist, these get the job done every time. Now that the face frame is attached, I'll go ahead and grab some old plywood and cut down the back, front, and sides for the drawer panel. And here I'm cutting a quarter inch rabbit for the bottom of the drawer to slide in. Now I don't know about you, but when you mix Adele with glue ups, my body moves in all kinds of weird ways. What are you doing? Dance off, bro! Me and you! And now that I got that out of my system, I can go ahead and actually glue up this drawer. And my drawer construction is pretty simple. It's just glue with butt joints clamped together and brad nails added for additional strength.
Then I cut the bottom panel of the drawer to size and slide it into place. Then I attach the drawer slides to the drawer and test fit to make sure it all slides in nice and smooth. Now I start the tedious process of removing all the stain from the wood. Like I said, this is leftover hardwood floors from our house and it came with a pre-stain of gunstock. As much as we like it in the house, I don't necessarily love it for this nightstand, so off it goes. And I go ahead and bust out the Craig one more time for more pocket holes. And here I'm drilling more pocket holes into the bottom shelf of the nightstand. I'm checking for level. Clamping in place, screwing her tight. Then I go ahead and polish off a box of popsicles and use the sticks to evenly space out the drawer front face. But I would not recommend this method. All that sugar cannot be good for you. Now I'm going to grab this oak board that's from a tree that fell in the front yard. I took my chainsaw and cut it into planks and let it dry for about two years. Now I'm going to rough cut it down with my circular saw into manageable sections that'll fit inside my router sled. And then I throw it into my clamp, use a hammer and chisel, and knock off all the remaining bark. And once all the bark is cleaned off, I go ahead and break out the mighty router sled. And as nice as this is to have, it throws sawdust everywhere. And I mean, everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, Jonah. But when you don't have a thickness planer, a router and a sled really is the next best thing. But I'm serious. Everywhere. But the upside of all that dust is watching it get vacuumed up afterwards. I don't know what it is about high-speed clamps. Watching it, I sure do find satisfying. I'm gonna take my bandsaw and cut a flat edge and it'll be close to final dimension. And then I'm gonna take a straight edge and my circular saw and cut one straight side. That'll make it easier when I take my hand plane and join up one edge. Now that the two pieces are jointed flat, I'm gonna take my doweling jig and drill some holes for the dowels for alignment and glue it flat.
Once it's done drying and out of the clamps, I go ahead and knock it down with 120 grit sandpaper before cutting it to final dimension. Now that's a perfect fit. Next, I take a quarter inch round over and soften all the edges. Since this is going in a wild child's bedroom, I prefer not to make an emergency trip to the hospital for stitches. Next, I'm going to sand with 220 followed by 320 grit sandpaper. Once sanding was complete, I add three coats of polyurethane, sanding in between each coat. And I measure and drill for the hardware for the drawer. Once I'm done with the top and the drawer hardware, I can move on to the side trim, gluing it on with tight bond three and clamping it into place. Once all the trim pieces are attached, I move through sanding through the grits and applying three coats of polyurethane. And here we have our finished nightstand. I have to say I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. And my daughter's ecstatic to be able to have a place to put her glasses and books at night.